In a secluded spot, the River Ange has carved an S-shaped ravine through the rocks and then empties into a small pool. Here on the banks lives a small population of the Spanish purple hair streak. Here the forces of nature play unrestrained, especially water, wind and drought, thus influencing the countryside. A male warms himself in the morning sunshine. Ready, he goes in search of nectar. Like here on some chamomile. The ilex hair streak flies at the same time and they may meet. The Christ's thorn is also an important resource for the Spanish purple hair streak. The Ilex hair streak is also a frequent visitor to it. As well as nectar, these butterflies need alternative sources of nourishment, like here where the butterflies are licking the branches of a small hawthorn in the morning sunshine. As they thread their way down the branches, could they be looking for mineral salts deposited by the floodwaters? Close by, several butterflies drink honeydew from the leaves of a small white oak. There are only a few small differences between the male and female. Mid-morning, the newly hatched females climb out of the leaf litter and find a sunny spot on a leaf amongst the shrubs where they can warm up. The females can be recognised by a larger orange band on the underwing and by their fatter abdomen. Slowly, the females straighten up and groom themselves cleaning their antennae. When it gets too hot, they move to a shadier spot.
During the hottest part of the day, the butterflies withdraw into the vegetation. Here, another newly hatched female relaxes, hidden in the shade in the early afternoon. When she feels overexposed to the sun, she moves to a shadier place. From two o'clock onwards, the males become more active, cleaning their antennae and opening their wings to warm up. Then they fly to a suitable perch at the edge of the bushes, where it's easier to look out for passing females leaving their shelter. The males have their wings open in readiness for flight. It's possible to make out the blue markings on top of the upper wing. Males continually patrolling up and down the bushes searching for females chase away their competitors in a swirling flight and then return to their perch. Around four o'clock, the females become restless and clean their antennae, partially opening their wings. Then, after positioning themselves, fly to a slightly higher spot from which they can easily be seen. Immediately, they are spotted by a male, then a short courtship flight follows, which finishes with mating high up in a shrub. Another male is ready for a conquest. While this newly hatched female prepares for a courtship flight, There can be no doubt that pheromones play an important role in the recognition of a female because resting females go unnoticed by passing males. Strangely, the male ilex hair streak is attracted to the female Spanish purple hair streak and tries to intervene, but she won't have anything to do with him. The attraction is so strong that he persists. Looking at their wings, we see clearly that the female has just hatched, whereas the wings of the male show signs of ageing. Mating can last several hours until nightfall. The next morning, after warming up, the butterflies go in search of nectar, like here on field scabious, Nortia arvensis. The females lack the large blue markings which the males have on the front of their wings, 
the females only have a few small blue marks. In this location, the Christ's thorn is one of the most important sources of nectar for the Spanish purple hair streak. Flowering takes place at the peak of their flight period, around mid-June. The most important host plant for this population at the River Ange isn't the ash, but Filaria latifolia. In the early afternoon, the females go in search of host plants on which to lay their eggs. The female climbs down the trunk laying her red eggs in the forks of lateral branches or where the trunk thickens. On another host plant, an egg has been laid while the female makes her way into the bushes. Gradually she approaches soil level and lays more eggs. Several eggs have been laid in a small shrub, 30 centimetres in height, right in the middle of the flood zone, as we see here in the hollow of the branch. And also in small clusters. Eggs have not only been found on Filaria latifolia, but also on Filaria angustifolia. A female flies down a little offshoot of the ant, looking for a host plant on which to lay her eggs. This time, she chooses a small ash, Fraxinus angustifolia, which is growing out of the water amongst the rocks. Fraxinus and Filaria belong to the same family, Oliaceae. Carefully she tests the branches with her antennae and her abdomen before laying her eggs there. She settles for a branch brushing the surface of the water and there she delicately lays several eggs. In summer most of the watercourses dry up. Summer is nearly over. Not all the eggs have survived this summer. Here are the remains of some shells. The first autumn rains fill the watercourses. Eggs which have been submerged by very heavy rains fade. After several days of heavy downpours, the watercourses are transformed into torrents, 
which overflow and drown the host plants. Plant and leaf debris carried by the current can easily be seen and indicates the level which the water reached. Water gushes from the hills for several days. The eggs, laid on the small ash, have survived the flood. At the end of March, although calm is restored, the effects of the winter floods are obvious along the banks of the And. It is significant that the females select above all those host plants which will be submerged and exposed to strong currents. At the beginning of April, the first caterpillars hatch. An ant quickly notices the two millimetre long caterpillar. Fifteen days later, the caterpillars on the ash hatch in their turn. It takes about two hours to be completely free from the shell. Two ants accompany the little caterpillar to another one further down the branch. We wonder why these ants are attracted to the caterpillars. It could be that the caterpillars produce pheromones or emit particular vibrations. Without doubt, the caterpillars benefit from the protection of the ants. A European turtle comes out of hibernation and prepares to take its first bath of the new season. During the first week, the caterpillars graze the edges of leaves in little circles and hide during the day, well camouflaged in the buds. A week later, the caterpillar has gained half a centimetre. Now the caterpillar works its way down and hides in the leaf litter during the day. The caterpillars have on their last segment a newcomer's gland which secretes a substance that attracts ants. The ants are very active around the caterpillars whilst they are feeding. An ant rides piggyback on the caterpillar's back.
By the beginning of May, the caterpillars on the Filaria latifolia have reached their adult size of two centimetres and rest hidden in the leaf litter. Here the newcomer's gland is easily visible. The resting caterpillars are generally watched over by handicapped ants, old soldiers with legs missing, like this one. When night falls, the caterpillars start to move and leave their shelter in search of food. Around mid-May, the caterpillars are ready to turn into chrysalises. By the next day, the chrysalis has formed. The ants are still there, which would suggest that the chrysalis also gives off pheromones and makes vibrations to attract the ants. The chrysalis stage lasts about 15 days, during which time it grows darker in colour. From the beginning of June, the first butterflies hatch and climb up out of the leaf litter and spread their wings. The life cycle of the Spanish purple hair streak is complete. Water and ants have played their significant role in the peculiar life of this butterfly. The future of this vulnerable and isolated population is dependent upon the dynamics of this ecosystem. The question is, is this a local adaptation for this butterfly in this habitat, or is this its normal way of life? Little changes to its ecosystem could have an adverse impact on the survival of this isolated population. It is therefore necessary to better understand their way of life in the hope of continuing to see this mysterious butterfly on the wing for as long as possible.